Well, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. It's great to have you here. We're going to be talking about how to develop a marketing transformation map. And I would like to thank Insurance WebEx for this opportunity. It's my first webinar with Insurance WebEx, hopefully the first of many to come. And I am going to be taking questions at the end. So if you have a question that you'd like to, to talk over, we'll leave plenty of time for that. If you'd like to tweet, I am on Twitter at WiredPRWorks, and the hashtag we're using for today's presentation is hashtag 3D social selling. Let me get this here. Maybe I can get it a little bit. Let's see. All right, here we go. Oh, full screen, there we go, all righty. So anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so exciting to see those registrations come in and know that we are a group of people from around the world today who are gathering to learn more about how to really get our business out to the people who need to know about our service and our products. And when you read the invitation, maybe this question really was one you were responding to. Maybe you feel overwhelmed and you're confused and maybe you're frustrated about the best way to market today. And believe me, you're not alone. So many people feel that way. A little bit about me. I know whenever I tune into a webinar, I'd always like to know, well, who is that person? I'll go into my story a little bit later, but just to give you a quick glance at who I am and where I came from, I am a co-author in two best-selling books. I wrote the LinkedIn chapter and the PR chapter in the Superstar series. And you are going to be getting the PR chapter from the Success Secrets of the Online Marketing Superstars, as well as a special gift that I'm going to be offering later on in the webinar. So please stay tuned. And I understand if you have to check your email, I know how that goes. I know it's easy to get distracted when you're on a webinar. What I'd like you to do is listen in and really focus on ideas that resonate with you, areas that you can really improve on in your business, because I guarantee that you're going to get one, two, three, maybe even more great ideas that you can use right away to improve your business. I like to think of myself as a winner. I've won a lot of sales awards and contests, and I would love it if you would think of yourself as a winner too, because it's the way to really present yourself, I think. And then uh, I'm also a blogger. I started writing at wiredprworks.com. I started that as my digital brand in 2006, two years after I started teaching blogging and digital marketing. And in that time, my blog has received several awards, including the top 50 marketing and PR blog and the top 50 PR blog, which is really nice to get. I love social media. I founded Social Media Club Chicago in 2008 as a little group along with a small group of people, we thought that it was gonna be one event and 60 events and five years later, I said, I've really had a blast everyone, but I'm going to be an advisor. What I learned from that experience though is how much you can get out of volunteering when you're really passionate about something. And in the first year of founding Social Media Club Chicago, I met 2000 new people, it was really, exciting. I went from having a pretty good network to having just an explosion of great people and contacts in Chicago and around the world. I like to think of myself as a creative person. You'll see a lot of original photography in this presentation. I love stories and I am a mom. I do have to say that I have the best family in the world and I hope that you can say that about yours as well. There's a picture of us I'm married to my husband, Bruce, who is a 100-time marathon runner, also a mountain climber. He works in financial services. My daughter does social media, which makes me very excited because I always love it when someone in my family is involved in something I am as well. My oldest son is in the hospitality industry, and our youngest son just graduated in May, and he works in the financial services insurance industry, as do my brother and sister. So we, we love the insurance industry industry, it's, it's part of our family. And I own a company called Corey West Media. And I've had my company since 1990. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I also wanted to introduce you to my dog. This is Hollywood. When I was rehearsing yesterday, she came in and listened to me. She loves it when I rehearse for webinars. I don't have her in here right now because she tends to uh, make some noise. But this is my home office and that's my dog. She says hello. 
<clears throat> and then this is Chicago. I love the city that's only 22 miles west of ours. And I stopped to take this picture. I do take pictures while I'm in the car, full disclosure, only at stoplights or when I am not driving. And what I love to do is to really capture the moment that I see. And that's one of the things I love about photography is you can capture a moment in time. It'll never look like this again. The cars will never be that way. We'll never see just that bit of mist above the John Hancock, but we can capture a moment in time. And wouldn't it be great if we could do that with marketing, if we could just stop everything? <laughs> well, this is a quote I found from Ad Age. And by the way, they just recently rebranded. They used to be Advertising Age, now they're Ad Age. And this is from the very most recent issue from the editor who said, things are moving faster every day, which means they'll never be this slow again, which I, I completely agree with. We are really on a, a, a turbocharged ride here. And that's one of the biggest problems we have in marketing today is things are moving so fast. This is an infographic I really like. It's called Conversation Prism. This is the fifth edition. It's put together by Brian Solis and Jess Three. This newest iteration has taken social media and turned it into kind of a wheel with different spokes that go out and the different networks are grouped by category. And in the very center is you. Now, when I show this to groups, when I speak to them, people's eyes just glaze over because they're like, wow, how can I be on all those social networks? And that's a good question. If you aren't on the social networks, are your clients on the social networks? So it's, it's kind of confusing because you've got one of your biggest problems is you really don't know how to attract attention. There's attention is just so fragmented and fractured. There's so many places to look. And not only that, our attention span is going down so quickly. You've probably seen that image of a goldfish, and it says that a goldfish's attention span is longer than a person's. So it's, there's a, really a lot of competition for attention. And then also, you know, there's a quest to build the brand. How do you stand out? How do people see you if you are getting that attention? How do you keep it? And, and how do they connect with the values that you have? We know that with social media and with marketing in general, it's easy to make a misstep. It, you might think, oh, wow, you know, our brand is great, but maybe there is even some simple confusion inside your company or your office. I just had that happen today. I got an apology email from a tech provider for um, an error that wasn't an error. It was something that one of the people higher up in the company had fixed for me and it actually solved the problem, but there was no internal communication to let them know what was happening. So although I still really love that brand, and I'm gonna work with them, I just felt like, geez guys, I wish that you, know, you could connect with each other. So that's a problem. And of course, connecting communities is also an issue. How do you get people to stay in touch? And how do you get them to stay interested in who you are and what you do? So there's a lot of challenges with marketing, and it's not just keeping up with technology. I know people say, oh, you know, there's something new. To me, the tech part is the easy part because if you can use your phone and you can text and you can take a picture, then that's pretty simple. When we get into things about how do you really focus your content and your social media marketing and just your marketing and sales strategy in general, that's where I think the biggest problem is, but also the biggest opportunity. So what I've done is I've come up with a marketing transformation map. And it's a guide to 3D strategies that'll help you maximize your productivity and profits right now. Now, before you get too excited, because I know I'm very excited, I do want to thank you again for taking time to be here today. And I also want to say I'm sorry and apologize because as excited as I am, and I would love to tell you everything I know, believe me, I would, I have to ask for your forgiveness because I can't get to it all, and I know that you have a very busy life, but what I can promise you is at the end, I will give you a way to stay in touch, and I can also invite you to stay in touch with me on LinkedIn or uh, Facebook or Twitter or whatever social network works for you, even Instagram, and just thank you again. So let's really look at what is the reality today, and this is the boathouse in Glen Ellen. It's on our lake. It's Lake Ellen, and for me, I think this is kind of how marketing is today. People can see what's right in front of them. Maybe you can see your very best clients. You know, they're like the 
the um, greenery along the edge of the pond, but you know there is a place you want to go and you can't really quite see how to get there. You can barely make out what it is. And this would be your ideal. Not only can you see how to get there, you can even see the reflection. And it's difference between a cloudy day and a sunny day. So let's clear up some of those clouds for you so you can see something a little more clearly. And one of the ways that we can start doing that is by really getting a good grasp on what's going on in the world of marketing today. And I know when I talk to business groups, a lot of times I hear, oh, our clients aren't on Facebook, it's all B2B. Or I'm on Facebook only for family and fun. I'm not on there for professional reasons. Well, even if you don't use Facebook as a marketing avenue, and I think you should, the, the number that really jumps out to me here is the fact that every minute, Facebook like and share buttons are viewed on 15 million other websites. So even if you think, oh, it's over in its own corner, it's not. Facebook is everywhere. It's become a part of our society, as has social media in general. So now everyone is, is totally aware of marketing, and they're watching you to see what you're going to be doing with that. So how did I come up with this idea, and who am I the one to really solve these problems? Well, when I went to CES, which stands for Consumer Electronics Show, but they really just want you to say CES, I went there as one of five bloggers specifically chosen by Sears to cover what was happening in technology for small businesses and home offices. So when I was in Las Vegas, I was really taking notes on everything that was happening. It was so exciting. There was the Sony press conference with the Elvis dancers. There were private tours of the booths behind the scenes before they opened. And it was really thrilling. One of the themes that kept coming to me over and over and over was 3D. And as a person who loves movies, I've always loved the concept of 3D. And are you the type of person that would either like 3D movies or not? And that's a question, you know, it's two different types of, of flavors here. Some people would prefer a regular movie where you just go in, you sit down, you don't have to wear any glasses, you watch it and you leave. Other people like to have an experience where they can see with special glasses, they can see special effects, usually a bigger screen, and it's a more immersive, exciting experience. I'm in the latter camp. I like 3D movies. Even if they cost more, I think it's worth it. So I thought, well, how can marketing be 3D? And I did a retrospective, and I took a walk way back into my past to come up and, and organize a system around this concept. And just a really quick walk down memory lane, I'll, I'll take you through my career. And it also is highlighting along the way how marketing and sales has changed, starting with the insurance industry. When I joined out of college, I joined Dun & Bradstreet Plan Services. And my job was to do lead systems for insurance agents throughout the Midwest. So what we did was every week we would give them letters and then they would follow up with phone calls to their prospects and then we would do proposals for them. What I found was the agents who really worked the system were the ones who were the most successful. Consistency really, really made a difference. My next stop was at a company where we sold group life insurance and I was so bad at sales. This is my first opportunity to go out and meet the people I've been talking to on the phone. So I already knew them, but no one wanted to buy what I had. And I, I really got depressed. I mean, I drove around and I just hated it. So after six months, I called my boss and I said, I'm begging you to fire me. And I don't know if anyone's ever done that, but I pleaded with them to fire me. And he said, no, 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 you're just in the wrong territory. And I said, oh boy. So I didn't have another job. So I went back to Chicago and started a new territory. And what I learned here is if you can find people who have multiple pieces of business for you, or they can be good referral sources, then your career will take off. And that's what happened to me. So within 18 months, I qualified to win a trip for Hawaii. And another person who was in the top five was the person who had my territory in Indiana. So it takes some time to cultivate relationships. And if you know what you're looking for, then you're always going to win. So after that, I decided I would move into sales training. I would just thought, wow, you know, I've, I've really figured this out. I should do something with it. So I went to work for a company owned by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And my job was to to train health insurance agents on how to sell a life insurance product. 
As you can imagine, the health insurance agents did not like that at all. They did not want to be in the meetings. Here's this young kid who's trying to tell them what to do. And I took a step back and I thought, well, how can I make this work for everyone? So here's something you can do in your office. I, I talked to the people who were the, the lowest, the people who were the worst performers, and I said, what do you have problems with? And it was interesting because the same questions, the same hurdles kept coming up over and over and over again. And then I got the top performers and I asked them, how would you manage this? Or how do you manage this? I'm sure you get the same questions. And we put their answers to the questions, did a training, told everyone how to do it, and sales went up by as much as 400%. So that was very exciting to watch. And I loved it, but then I was traveling so much, I had my daughter, and I said, you know, I can't do this anymore. So I started my company, Corey West Media, and I've been like the Forrest Gump of marketing communications. If there was a place to be, and there was something really exciting going on, and it was a frontier, I was there helping plant the flag. And I kind of always felt like I was an alien and my spaceship never came in. Although now my spaceship is really here and everyone is on it. But that's really how I developed my 3D marketing plan was through personal experience with sales and then also working with so many different companies since 1990 to, to develop communications that would really maybe not always be about sales, but always be about persuading people to take action and do something that would move their life in a new direction. My most recent experience in the insurance industry at a higher level was with Million Dollar Roundtable. And I was asked to speak at their annual conference in Vancouver. So I went there and I went for my rehearsal in this larger picture that's me rehearsing. And when I opened the doors, I, I, was, I just felt like, wow, you know, there are 1,500 seats here. And I practiced and we we're gonna have interpreters for the next day, it was all very exciting. I got to sign books and I got to speak in the technology center. And one of the places I got to be is at the top of the table reception. And when I walked in, I was all excited because I'd known about top of the table since I started right out of college with Dun & Bradstreet Plan Services and I'd always wanted to be around the top of the table people. So I checked in and they said, um, well, why are you here? I said, well, I'm a speaker. And I had an email that said speakers are invited. And they said, there aren't any other speakers here. And I said, oh, okay. I, and I said, first I said, well, I've got an email. And then I said, that's all right. I understand. So I walked to the elevator and I pressed the down button and they came running after me. They said, oh, we, you are supposed to be here. And I said, oh, okay. So I went in and I got to spend an hour talking to people at the top of the table. And it was really interesting because just walking to that room, you could see how these people really were the winners in the world. And just the way they welcomed me and talked to me, it was really very empowering even to me. And it was also just an experience that I would love everyone to have is to be in that winner's circle. So what are those biggest solutions today? And that's what we're going to be talking about, how to attract attention, how to build your brands, and how to connect communities. So we're going to take some time to do that right now. And once again, if you have questions, please just type them in. And when uh, we're finished with the presentation, I'll be happy to stay on as long as you need for me to answer the questions. So how do you attract attention today? And one of the ways to do it is through search, because let's face it, everybody is going to check you out. That's what they do. And you want to check yourself out too. see what you see when you search for your name on Google, Bing, Yahoo, LinkedIn, and even Siri. Yes, Siri. It's interesting. I asked Siri, what do you know about Barbara Rosconi? And she sent back a picture of my sister and me, which I didn't even know was on the internet. That was a couple of years ago. And I asked her again last month and there's a lot more information. So I guess their search engine has gotten a lot better, but see what you see out there and see if you like it. And that really reflects who you are. One tip for you is if you have a very common name like Bill Johnson, then what you might want to do is include your middle initial or your middle name. I know uh, that's a way to really differentiate yourself and also show up better in search. So really think about how are you going to attract attention through search and let's talk about a couple different ways to do that. One way is to really look at where the people are. And uh, it's, it's kind of funny because when I show this slide, people will say, oh, poor LinkedIn, only 18% of the people check in every day. Well, that could be good though, because those 20%, one out of five, 
if you are very active every day, then you're going to be out there looking at people and people are going to be finding you. Another way is on Instagram, if you'd like to get attention there, if you like to take pictures, and I know I do, it's one of my favorite networks. The thing about Instagram that's great is you can take a, a picture and you can hashtag it, add a filter if you want, and you can also send it to Facebook and to Twitter. Twitter won't show the image, but Facebook will. So if you like to take pictures, that's a way to really get attention. And then, of course, LinkedIn is the place to really do B2B marketing. And if you don't believe me, you can read their numbers. They're the number one social media channel. 92% of B2B marketers leverage LinkedIn over other, all other social platforms. So it's a place where you can go with confidence and know that that is going to be a place where you can stand out, get attention, and make a difference if you do it the right way. Another trend that's coming around for marketing as a way to get attention is to partner with influencers. And if you're interested in how to use micro influencers to build big engagement, this is if you go to Influence Pros, you can listen to my podcast with them. But real quick, a tip on influencer marketing is, let's say you're a community insurance agent, think about who your influencers are in your community. Is it somebody who's with the Chamber of Commerce? Is it... Um, somebody who is in leadership? Could it be somebody from the school? Who do people really look at as being influential? And if you're at an event where they are, take a picture, you can tag them, or maybe you host the event and you say, uh, welcome to the leaders in our community. And then that way you're automatically using influencers to uh, align with your brand. You're not really asking them to sell anything for you, but it's called like expert by association. So people are associating you with them. LinkedIn is the best social network for lead generation. And LinkedIn is debuting native video. I, I don't know if you've seen this yet on your mobile phone, but it is good to keep in mind if you're looking about how to attract attention, video is a great way to do it. Now then, if you're wondering what is your social selling score, I'll stay on this slide for a minute so you can go over to LinkedIn right now. You can do it on your phone or on your desktop if you want. When we work with salespeople and we do LinkedIn Sales Navigator trainings, we always look at, look at what is the social selling score. And this is something to keep an eye on. It's what we call a KPI, Key Performance Indicator. So look at where you start, where you go, and really look for improvement. And what's cool about this is it also compares you to how you rank within your industry. And it tells you where you need to improve. So for example, it, it, there are 25 points on each one and you're, it will rate you on how you establish your professional brand, if you're finding the right people, how you're engaging with insights and how you're building relationships. And there are, are examples and ways on how to do that and how to improve your score. But it's a good way for you to look at it and just get a reality check. And if you're the type of person who wants to improve what you're doing, and I think you are because you're here with us today, then check that out. And you can even leave us uh, a note if you want. You can post what your SSI score is in the chat box. One way to get attention is through keywords. And if you want to know what your keywords are in your profile or any content that you have at all, what you can do is you can copy the content into a tool online called wordle.net and wordle will take all the words and it will give you a beautiful word cloud graphic image you can change the color you can change the font you can do a lot of different things with it so this is my linkedin profile and what's interesting about it is you can really at a glance see what that person does you can also change this. If you want to change the prominence of one word, let's say you wanted to take out, um, I wanted to take out social or media, or let's say you wanted to add in a different kind of insurance, or you wanted to add in your community, the simple way to do that is just use that word more in your LinkedIn profile. So this is a homework assignment for you. Check and see what your keywords are and do they match up with what you have right now? Keeping in mind that the reason you're doing this is you want to make sure 
that you have those words that people are looking for when they're looking for someone like you to buy insurance from. So now the next section is you want to build your brand. And these are some skyscrapers in Chicago. You can see that they're very visible and they're very big. <laughs> I was downtown teaching a class and I looked up and I thought, wow, that's a, a nice visual. I, I love looking up at skyscrapers. When you have a brand that people can recognize and they know what it stands for, it makes your life a lot easier, especially if it's based on the values that you bring to the table. And if you're wondering, well, you know, I've been talking a lot about marketing, should I really be using social media? And will it help me with my branding? Will it help me build my business? If you're not, everyone else is. So this is another little plug for why you need to really be thinking about doing more. 81% of small and medium businesses use social media and 94% use it for marketing. This is a study from LinkedIn. So how are they using content marketing to build their brand? And an average of eight different tactics per company or organization, that's a lot. What I would recommend you do is choose the two or one or two that you're really, really comfortable with and that you like. So for instance, if you really like writing, blog posts are great. If you love staying in touch with people via newsletter, that's easy. I shouldn't say it's easy, it's easy if you like doing it as well. If you like in-person events, then that's another way to build your brand. It's really about, you've already got the attention. It's really about getting in touch and building that brand around something. So for example, if your target market is new families, how can you really come up with a way to reach them? And the way we do that with our clients is we have a wired PR MBA strategy. It's a five point system. And MBA stands for Marketing Plus Business Accelerator. That works. It's really kind of a shorthand way or an express route to clear up a lot of the confusion. So the first thing we start with when we look at building a brand is what are the words that you want to use? What are the keywords? And what messages do you want to have out there? That could be like the Wordle Cloud that'll help you see what keywords you already have out there. And what are you missing? And then what are your intentions? Why are you in this? What are you here to do? Are you here to help people have a, a more fill in the blank? What do you wanna have people have more of? Is it more financial freedom? Is it more confidence? Is it more um, assets for their loved ones? What are you really trying to give them more of? And then who are the people that you're trying to reach? So we do talk about how to develop personality profiles and back to if it's, is it a young family or is it uh, uh, retirees or is it people who are getting ready to retire? Who are you really trying to reach? And then what marketing routes are you going to use to reach them? And we like to think about what's the fastest way to get to where they are. So for example, if you're trying to work with folks over 50, if that's your target market, you're probably not gonna be using a lot of Snapchat. You're probably gonna be using more LinkedIn, maybe more blogs or newsletters. But if you're looking at reaching students who are in college or getting out of college, then Snapchat is where you wanna go. So it's kind of like when you wanna go someplace and you put the destination into Google Maps. You get a few different routes, you get different ways to get there, you can walk, you can take public transportation, drive. And so our goal is to really put where you are now and where you wanna be into kind of like a, a Google Maps and really route out the, the quickest, fastest, direct place to find those people. And then we look at experiences. So what is the experience that you have starting with the very beginning? How do people become aware of you? How, how do they sign up for more information? When do you meet them? And we map out the entire customer experience journey. And we also love to weave in storytelling all throughout. So when we think of stories, we want to think about how you help people before, during, and then after. What was the transformation they experienced by working with you to get their insurance? So it really gives you an opportunity to highlight your clients and also uh, deliver testimonials. And then the design. We look at how are you going to look digitally? So what are people going to see on the screen with your website, your social media? And then direct what kinds of 
interactions, what kind of action are you going to take, and then dynamic. So that would be more the excitement and the storytelling. And that's the MBA strategy, Wired PR MBA strategy. Now, a company that's already doing that is LinkedIn. Their strategy, they, I, I heard them present, and they called it their Big Rock strategy. And they have come up with a whole series called the Sophisticated Marketer's Guide to LinkedIn. And you could do something like this too. It could be the Sophisticated Parent's Guide to Financial Planning, or it could be something like uh, the Sophisticated Planning, the Sophisticated Executive's Guide to Retirement Planning. And it would be a collection of interviews, the way LinkedIn does it, is they get experts in the field and then they interview them about what's going on. They put the in an, in an ebook, and then each interview could either be like a blog post, a podcast, or something like that. You could also take it totally off target if you want to do something about your community. And I wish more people would do this if you would position yourself as the anchor person in your community. So now you're not really talking about insurance, but you are the go-to person for any news. And to me, that kind of person really achieves a lot of goals. You automatically attract attention because you're the one that, that is in the know. And you build your brand because you're really interested and you want to give back. And the last thing we're going to talk about is connect communities. I'm just previewing it here. I offer the suggestion whenever I talk to groups like park districts or economic development corporations because I feel like that is an easy way. I always use the word easy, easy for me, right? But <laughs> it's um, a heartfelt way too, I think, to really connect the community. And uh, the cool thing is you can interview anybody you want about whatever you want. So if you want to go interview the high school football coach about what does leadership mean and what kind of uh, game are they going to have at homecoming, that could be an interview. Maybe you go interview someone who's had an appliance store in your town for 40 years and you want to know what's really a good guide for small businesses. So especially if, if your client is small business, that would be a great one if that's your target market. And just a few ways to really uh, look at how LinkedIn will help you build your brand. This is a new thing that they have. It's called active status. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but it will tell people when you are online. So similar to Facebook with the chat and people know whether you're online or not. You can turn this on or off, but the reason I have this here is to show you, LinkedIn shows you on updates how many views of your posts show up in the feed. What I love about social media, and our clients love too, is looking at what the stats are like. So this is kind of interesting. And if you, you know, that's, that's okay. It's kind of like saying, okay, so many people drove by this billboard, but how many people really picked up the phone or visited the website or really did business with that company that's out there? Still, it does give you an idea of what LinkedIn likes to show. And I think by adding LinkedIn and by adding, I mean you have the ampersand character and then the name of the company or the person and they pop up and that way more people see it, which is a tactic I used on this post. I just pulled this uh, off today from my mobile app and so you can go desktop or mobile, but you can see almost 3,000 views. Right now, I think I'm like 50 away from 3,000. Nine people liked it, and 30 people gave it a thumbs up. In this post, I probably tagged about eight or 10 people. It was about a board meeting I was at for National Speakers Association. My next task is to go to those 30 people who liked the update and ask them if they would like to connect if we're not connected already. So it's a great way to meet new people. And then what is cool too, is it tells you what type of people are viewing your post. 387 people are salespeople, which is okay. You know, that's fine. I like salespeople. But what's really cool is the CEO and executive director level. 70, 141 people, 147 people. <laughs> wow, 147 CEOs and executive directors, which would be my target market, have looked at that post. I don't know who they are, but I do know it's getting out to the right people. So let's move to the next section, which is dynamic, and that's to connect to communities. How in the world do you do that today in marketing? And I want you to imagine a room or a meeting space like this one, and you've got some empty chairs, and as people walk in, they're the exact right people that you want to talk to. They're all your perfect targets. They're the people you love to hang out with. They're the people you enjoy doing business with. 
and you know that you can provide them the highest value they're going to get from anyone at all in your business. So how do you connect with those people in your communities? Let's look at some ways. I think the biggest way to do that is through personality and reputation. And that's the way I'm redefining PR. I know press releases and there's a lot of people think PR is just that. But to me, it goes really deeper. And I feel like with the kind of world we're in right now, the more you can personalize what you're doing and you can match up with other people. So let's say your personality is you, uh, you do love to run. Let's say you're a runner, then, you know, other runners would probably like you. If you're a golfer, same thing. Maybe you're a chef. So one of the biggest problems I see with people on LinkedIn or social media or business in general is they really downplay their personality. I had one person who told me, oh, you know, I, I ride a BMW motorcycle, but I would never want anyone to know that. And I said, well, why not? And he said, well, I don't know. What do people think of motorcycle riders? And I said, well, I, I just read a book about branding and it talked about the difference between Harley riders and BMW riders. And both of them have really tight communities. So if you're okay with that, I'm sure you would really connect with a lot of people. So really think about what is your personality and then what is your reputation? And keep in mind that you might want your reputation to be one thing, but today people can say whatever they want about you. So even though they can do that, you really want to monitor your reputation. You just can't let it fly out there and not read updates and really search for what's happening. One easy way to do this is to set up a Google alert for your name or for your agency's name. So anytime that you're mentioned, you'll, you'll know what's being said. Another way to find out your personality is to look at uh, how the world sees you. This is a Sally Hogshead tool and, and I'm an avant-garde which I kind of like. I never thought that's what I was. But it will really give you insights. It's kind of weird that it can do that. It tells you how the world sees you. And uh, it'll tell you what, what your strengths are. So if you're wondering, what are my strengths? That'll help you out. And then really think about what stance you want to take. Do you want to be king or queen of the jungle? And everyone knows you're there and you're, uh, you don't really have to work. You know, everything comes to you. It's okay if you take naps. Maybe you're already at that spot. But you have to be careful, even if you're at that spot, because you've got the tiger who everybody recognizes because it's got bold stripes and the tiger is always on the hunt. So do you align more with the tiger? Or maybe you're like my cat Pepper, who is very playful and people love people who are social. They just want to be around them. Everybody knows somebody like that. You just know when they walk in the room, you're going to feel good because they make you feel good. So whatever you pick is okay. Just make sure that you really know what kind of personality and reputation you want to portray because that's what people are going to see. And again, align with people who have a personality like yours. So let's say you do want to work with young families, but you're a grandparent. That's okay. You still have that family value. And if you love kids, I know I do, then that's an easy jump to make. I want you to keep in mind that it's, you know, we talked a lot about words. People are visual learners, and this is something that really is hitting home more and more and more. We mentioned video a little bit earlier in the presentation. LinkedIn is adding video. It's going to be available on mobile. You can already do live video on Facebook, YouTube, did it on Google. And this presentation I'm doing now, it's really easy on Zoom to say more, and you can be doing the video live online. You don't really have to do video if you want to. I think it's something you need to think about because that is a way to connect communities. Just really be aware that people want to see things. And then I, another caution is what do they want to see? So when I do social selling workshops, I'll go around the room and I'll say, okay, it's the first day of fall or it's the first day of spring or you know, it's St. Patrick's Day. What kind of image are you going to share? And when we go around and we hear what people share, a lot of times their personality is what we hear instead of what their client's personality might be like. And you can, uh, alignment is fantastic, but if you know that people will be more interested in something than you might be, then it's okay to go ahead and show them what you think they might like. And one of the ways to figure out what people like is just to test and do a lot of different things. You don't know what they're going to respond to. So it's good just to check it out. And that's why I like Instagram because I can send up 
images about my town. I can send up images about what I do, about my family, my pets. I love flowers. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see all that. But that gives you a way to really have kind of a variety in your personality. You can see what people respond to, and then you can take that back over to the other networks. LinkedIn now allows you to upload five different images in a post. So that's another way to really test and see what people like. So really make sure that you're using your camera if you're not. So now we've talked a lot about what you're gonna do with social media marketing. We talked about all the problems that we have. Wow, <laughs> getting attention, staying uh, connected to the community, building that brand. There's a lot of different things that you need to do. And one of the things you need to do every day is to choose your path on a lot of different decisions. You know, what are you going to post? Are you going to post? Are you going to reply to somebody? Are you going to accept someone? So you really need a guide. And I would like to give you another free guide. I am giving you the PR guide from Online Marketing Superstars. So you're going to get that. I'm also going to give you the LinkedIn guide from Success Secrets of the Social Media Marketing Superstars. So thank you for staying online. I'm going to give you that link here in just a minute. And what these will do is they will give you. Uh, a base plan, kind of like a jump start to get into what really works with public relations. It's uh, got all kinds of checklists and places to go and even a PR primer to get you started. And then the LinkedIn guide will give you an idea of how to really dig in and use LinkedIn. You don't have to worry. They're not going to be overly complicated. They're going to be simple. They're step by step. And they're the kind of thing where if you want to print it out and just highlight what you think you'd like to try, you can just do that. So it's a guide to get you started. And that's one of the things I love to do is help people get to where they need to be and really find them a quick success path. So the question for you today is, do you want to do the cinch trail or the scenic trail? As your tour guide, I have to ask you. And this was taken in Arizona. I went out there with my husband to see our son. And they both love to hike. I love to hike too, but I'll tell you, every time my husband says it's going to be two miles, it's always at least six. And this day was no different. Luckily, it was not super hot, but uh, Scenic Trail is the one that they chose. Since Trail, I, kind of, I was kind of pulling for that one, but I knew it just went right back to the visitor center. And I thought, well, that's a little too cinchy. Uh, the Scenic Trail was a little bit too long. So I'd like to just go over your options and, and say, well, which one do you want to take today? So if you do the scenic trail, I'll let you go. That's DIY. You do it yourself. And um, you have to ask yourself some questions. If I do the scenic trail for my marketing, will it really save me money? And um, it, it might save you some money, but it could increase your risk as well. Because if you don't know what you're doing and you put something out that can take away from your personality reputation instead of build it, then that's a problem. It can also be time consuming. I know people struggle with not knowing what to post, even something as simple as what do I put up for uh, New Year's? You know, that can take a lot. Or how do I wish people a happy birthday? So it can be time consuming. It's also subjective. And one of the biggest problems we find when we start working with clients is they really undervalue who they are and what they do. And our, our sweet spot is working with the best in class who needs more promotion and more marketing. And they're just wearing, they're like Harry Potter. They're wearing a cloak of invisibility. The only people who really know them are their clients and they do a fantastic job for their clients. We had one client who had us interview 42 of their clients and talk about their relationship. And in the course of doing that, we were able to develop even a vocabulary for them they didn't know their clients had. So you're really subjective. And in, you, and in, in, our, in our culture, it's not seen as good to be um, braggadocious. I get that. But if you do have uh, a personality and reputation that's out there helping people, I think people should know about it. So that's where the PR personality and reputation could get fuzzy. I, you know, we have this whole brave plan. And one of the things is, are you revealing enough? And we help you with that. And of course, we only want to reveal what's really exciting and, and uh, valuable, but we do want people to let you know about all the great things that you have to offer. And then we're back to DIY, do it yourself. So whether it's painting a room or mowing your lawn or uh, cleaning your house or doing your marketing, 
do it yourself is still do it yourself. You still have to find the time. And I think one of the big problems too that isn't on there is motivation. How do you stay motivated to get it done? So just think about those things. Then if you do the cinch route with the 3D map, and we do have a course that we're gonna talk about here in just a second. Yes, there is an investment, but it will help you manage your risk. It's gonna be more efficient because you're gonna have the path to walk on. The trail's already mapped for you. It's objective. We can help you really figure out your best plan and your best approach. And your personality and reputation is clear and you're plugged in. You're plugged into a network that's really gonna help you get to where you wanna go. So here's just a quick look at the different, three different modules. There's actually a fourth one too on uh, social media. And this, we start off with brave online marketing. And one of the biggest things is the audit. That's really what our clients find a lot of value in because we see what their prospective clients see and we stay on top of what's happening with their competition. So we can teach you how to do that and then how to develop engaging content marketing. You know, what, what's really going to get attention? How can you do a true to life storytelling narrative? And then the dynamic design, we're going to really dig into the wired system and we'll talk about how to set KPIs. And the last one, measurement, is so important. It's really exciting to see how you're moving the needle and how things are happening. And what's really cool is to align this alongside what you're already doing that's working. So it's kind of like taking extra vitamins or something. You really can boost up all your actions that you're taking right now and really enhance your results. So that's just a, a guideline. So when I thought about this, we have um, a special offer for you today. If you'd like to get on the map, it's $9.97, and that includes four modules, the 12-step transformation process, live Q&A calls, a 40-point LinkedIn success checklist that we use with our clients. Nobody else has it. We're happy to give you that. And a Facebook group to stay in touch. So if you have questions along the way, then we'll be able to go over them. Now, if you feel like that sounds great, but I do need a little bit of consultation, then um, you can upgrade to VIP, and that's $14.97. It's got everything the same, but you'll also get that consultation, which is valued at $1,000. So how do you get started? Well, uh, the, you can enroll. Class starts on October 4th, which is one week from today. And if you're wondering, boy, should, is this for me or not? Good news, I have reserved the entire afternoon and evening to answer questions. So you can schedule a discovery call today. And in that call, we'll talk about how to tackle maybe your one or two biggest problems. And I'll give you some ideas too. And you can also download your PR and LinkedIn eBooks. And here's the link for that. It's at budurl.me forward slash 3D map insurance. WebEx. So budurl.me forward slash 3D map insurance WebEx. What you'll see when you go there is you will be on my website or my blog, my barbarasgoni.com site, and that will be a blog post. And you can click on the links there to do all these things. If for some reason you go there and you're like, I don't really understand how to do this, that's perfectly fine. You can get in touch with me on LinkedIn. And I will be happy to walk you through what's happening or on Twitter. That would be great as well. My goal is to really give you as much opportunity to improve your business and make it easier and to really clear up a lot of that confusion around marketing so that you have a success path and a success route in 3D, digital, directly, and dynamically. And once again, I do love working with people in the insurance industry, and I do apologize for not being able to stay on the, the, the call with you all day long. I know you don't have time either. I hope you'll forgive me for that, and just thank you again for your time. So that is the link, and now uh, this is a little bit about me. You'll get a copy of the slides, so you can read my bio, and then that is uh, a shot looking out at Chicago, and it's really exciting for me to look and just think about all those people and all those buildings and all the prospects there are for you in the world. And my hope is that with our time today, you've been able to come up with some creative ways that will help you get closer to the people who need to have what you're offering them to have a, a better life, a more financially free life and a more fun life just because they get to know you. So thank you so much. I am going to go over to questions now and see what we have in our questions. 
Okay, let's see what we've got here. Well, we don't have any questions yet that I can see. Uh, if people would like to ask one, please uh, go ahead and ask a question and I would be happy to answer. And you can see the web page behind us. Okay, well, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you do have any questions, you know where to find me, either at WiredPRWorks on Twitter.com, Barbara Rasgoni on LinkedIn. And I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn and answer any questions that you have. And I look forward to helping you on your success path, whether you choose the scenic route or the cinch route. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.